Hey everyone, Peter here. Welcome back to my channel and thanks for tuning in. If you're new here, come on in. You can check out my other videos for posing hot toys along with tips, tricks, and best practices on how to display them using strings, wires, and other household items. But if you've been following my content for a while, you may notice something different about my display cabinets and that these are not IKEA Detolfs which I've always used and the reason for that is my partner and I moved to a new apartment. Now fellow collectors can probably relate, but previously we didn't have a lot of space living in a tiny apartment so we had to be really selective about which figures to display versus keeping them boxed up in storage like the speeder bike. Additionally, our detail shelves were starting to get a bit crowded, especially since I prefer posing our figures interacting in some way. And with the increasing amount of figure announcements and pre-orders that are still on the way, we decided it was time to start looking for a new home that could accommodate our needs, not only for our collection, but for our two cats as well. And as luck would have it, a new location that fit the bill presented itself, so we've been pretty busy setting up the new place over the past couple months. Now, for the longest time, I've been wanting to upgrade to Maja cases, which are often seen as the pinnacle of display cabinets throughout the community. However, I could never pull the trigger due to their high cost, long turnaround times, and inability to adjust the shelf height. Now, that isn't to say it's a bad thing, and I mean no disrespect. On the contrary, I've long since admired Maja cases and anyone who can afford them, and from what I've seen, collectors are usually overjoyed with their purchase upon delivery, which is ultimately what matters most, right? But personally, I was looking for something a little more affordable that also had the flexibility to adjust the shelves. And so for this video, I want to share my journey of building these custom cabinets at half the cost of several Maja cases for anyone out there who might be considering this option as well. But before I do, I want to give a huge shout out and thanks to Costa over at Pop Culture Living Room for being the main inspiration for this passion project. Now, in case you weren't already aware, he has a multi-part tutorial on his channel that goes over in great detail how to convert a metal storage rack into a well-lit enclosed cabinet for collectibles of all sizes. He mentions all the materials, tools, and techniques that he used throughout the process while also making it super fun, lighthearted, and best of all, encouraging to anyone who may be apprehensive taking on this kind of project, so I'll link his channel down below. Now if you can believe me when I say I had no prior experience with this kind of stuff other than assembling IKEA furniture. I never took woodshop classes nor learned upholstery as a kid, so I watched and studied Costa's videos to learn how to help build my confidence. But once I was ready, I bought two storage racks in the color and dimensions that I wanted from Walmart which appear to be sold out at the moment, but you can probably find similar ones from Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, or your local hardware store. Now it's also worth mentioning that a storage rack with 24 inch depth can fit a lot more figures and vehicles, but will naturally take up a lot more space, so I went with the 18 inch depth for a sleeker look. Now what's also cool about these racks is they have no screws. The metal frame has open slots and rivets that lock into place with a rubber mallet or a hammer and a towel, so I didn't even have to turn a single screw for this entire build. But once the frame was complete, I began outlining half inch squares on the front corners of each panel for the LED power cables to pass through. Now when it comes to removing the corners, I tried using a razor blade at first but I wasn't making any progress. So I watched a few videos on how to safely operate a jigsaw cutter which honestly turned out to be a lot easier than I thought. They can be intimidating at first, especially if you're inexperienced like me. But I bought one for $30 that has just one setting, plug and go. So if you're out there telling yourself, oh that's something I can never do, a friendly reminder is that you'll never know what you're capable of until you try. Next up was covering the shelves, and I personally opted for black microfiber bed sheets because they're really thin, lightweight, and look somewhat premium while still being really affordable. Now there's really no right or wrong way here. For example, Costa chose white faux leather while I've seen others paint their shelves black or even replace them entirely with glass and acrylic shelves instead, and that's the beauty of custom builds, simply doing what works best for you. And so I just cut a queen size bed sheet in half, then wrapped each shelf using 8mm staples. Now for the back sides, I bought two 4x8 white hardboards from Home Depot for $20 each, but if you don't care about the color, they do have slightly cheaper brown ones as well. However, I like the option of switching to the white backgrounds if need be. Also, the hardboards were 24 inches taller than the cabinets themselves, so I just removed the excess from the top with a jigsaw cutter. But if you do this, be sure to wear a thick mask even if you're outside to avoid inhaling any hazardous chemicals during the cutting process. Now as for the acrylic panels, I shopped at a small local business that specializes in custom plastics because it was more precise and cheaper when sold as large panels. 
But if that's not an option for you, then you can also buy pre-cut acrylic sheets in various thickness and sizes, either online or the usual hardware stores. And similar to the shelves, I just cut another queen size bed sheet in half, then wrapped the two hardboards using duct tape rather than staples. That way I can easily remove the black sheets and convert the cabinets to white backgrounds in the future. Then I secured the hardboards to the back of the metal frame using black duct tape. Doing so adds the benefit of closing off any gaps between the frame, therefore dustproofing the backside as well. Next up was lighting. Now these do come in a variety of length, color, and package quantity, and I just got an A-pack of the 4 foot long light bars in 6500 Kelvin. They're described as cool white online, but they're really more of a pure white color in person. And as for the wiring, I followed Costa by wrapping the long white cables in black vinyl tape for better camouflage and routed them along the metal frame. But for the actual light bars themselves, I just used a few velcro strips that I had laying around. And now that the cabinets were mostly built, I then moved on to the acrylic panels and drew 1.5 inch borders around the sides and bottoms using a dry erase marker and ruler, and 2 inch borders for the tops. Then came the really stressful part of adhering black vinyl tape which definitely took a few tries to remove the air bubbles. Next I applied 2 layers of magnetic tape around the edges for each panel with small cutouts to avoid the rivets of the metal frame, but I didn't add any weather strips here because the magnetic tape already helps keep dust out, at least for the most part. Now when removing the protective layer from the acrylic panels, the remaining residue and static electricity did attract a lot of dust and debris within minutes, so it really helps having Nobis plastic cleaner. The kit that I bought came with 3 different bottles and a few polish cloths, and I just sprayed some of the cleaner onto the cloth and gently wiped away all the debris. All that remained was to display some figures and close up the cabinets. Now I didn't bother cutting the acrylic panels into separate pieces for each shelf because doing so would have locked in the shelf height, which I actually changed 3 times throughout this build, and I might do so again in the future. But there you have it, 2 fully custom display cabinets with a very affordable price tag. And for those wondering, I did make a spreadsheet of all the materials to keep track of the cost, which was significantly cheaper than Magicase and had a much faster turnaround time. Now again, one isn't necessarily better than the other since it all comes down to personal preference, but if you're undecided like I was, then hopefully this helps you with your purchasing decision one way or the other. And lastly, we do still have our Detoffs, but they're in another room and still need to be filled up with our Marvel figures, so I may share an update for them later this year. But that's pretty much it for this video. Now again, I can't thank you all enough for your patience and support, especially since I mentioned the idea of posing live streams in my previous video. Moving and setting up a new place has been no easy task, but I'm excited to have an actual desk and workstation now, so stay tuned for live streams in the near future. Now if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. I'll try to answer any questions in the comments, but be sure to check out Costa's channel too since he was way more thorough with his build. But as always, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you in the next video.